Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. NASA's New Horizons mission to the dwarf planet Pluto has provided scientists on Earth with countless puzzles and mysteries. From impossible sand dunes, which were never expected on the tiny planet's frozen surface, to equally unexpected giant mountains, to a surprising absence of so-called impact craters, and selective regional cratering with highly circular craters not to be expected on any Kuiper Belt object. The Plutonian moons have proved equally surprising, such as the moon Charon, with its puzzling troughs and trenches stretching for hundreds of miles. And now, a team working with the Chandra X-ray Observatory has reported perhaps the greatest surprise about Pluto to date, the discovery of the emission of X-rays from Pluto. The team is also reporting that Pluto has a giant comet-like tail, which the scientists believe may be as much as 1,000 times the radius of Pluto. The scientists say of Pluto's surprising X-rays, we've just detected for the first time X-rays coming from an object in our Kuiper belt and learned that Pluto is interacting with the solar wind in an unexpected and energetic fashion. We can expect other large Kuiper belt objects to be doing the same. Before our observations, scientists thought it was highly unlikely that we detect X-rays from Pluto. Today. Physicist Eugene Bagashoff begins the first in a four-part series, offering his analysis of the most compelling scientific data from the Plutonian system. In the recent months, we have seen more and more data being released and analysis being made in the wake of the historical Pluto flyby of the New Horizons space probe. Let us briefly review the available data in some of the publications to see if they might provide a novel outlook on this dwarf planet and maybe even clues relevant to the Electric Universe agenda. First, I would like to discuss the visual part of the planet and what is happening on its surface. When you look at Pluto, probably the first thing that catches your eye is its incredible diversity. We might see quite complex and strange landforms, as well as more regular ones. Craters, mountains, rills, valleys, smooth plains, quote, pitted uplands, bladed terrain, snakeskin terrain, end quote, and even something that resembles sand or snow dunes, and other things like that. So, from the first look, it doesn't appear to belong in the place where it is situated right now in our system. Rather, it looks more similar to our terrestrial planet family, or maybe Saturn's moon Titan. In previous Space News episodes about Pluto, we've already touched on that subject and discussed the possible origins of this dwarf planet as a captured object, possibly former moon of a giant planet. So the diversity of its surface seems to support this idea, which is consistent with the EU scenario of planetary chaos. Probably the most distinctive feature on the whole planet, or at least the part that we've been able to observe, is the so-called Tombow Regio, a bright feature sitting slightly to the right of center of the New Horizons encounter hemisphere, and on the opposite side of planet with respect to the prime meridian of Pluto. The prime meridian is counted from the spot above which the biggest moon Charon hovers, so this mentioned region cannot be seen from Charon. The brightest part of Tombow Regio is called the Sputnik Planum, and in a lot of ways it's very different from all the other visible regions. According to the spectroscopical data, Sputnik Planum terrain is mostly composed of nitrogen, carbon monoxide and methane isis. We might see very bizarre cellular patterns on its surface, from the visual data available, they seem to be a slightly convex features, separated by shallow troughs about 100 meters deep. It is thought that this might be caused by convection, since the mentioned ices are somewhat soft in the present conditions, and might flow almost like a very viscous liquid, creating these convective polygons. The heat source for this convection is unknown. Basically, a few versions were proposed. The remainder of the internal heat left from the epoch of planetary formation, the heat from radioactive elements in the deeper layers, or maybe the refreezing of the hypothesized subsurface ocean, which would also liberate a significant amount of latent heat. Aside from those cellular structures, the Sputnik Planum demonstrates another remarkable feature, the complete absence of craters. So whatever it is that shapes the surface of this region, it should do it fast and strong enough to erase the possible cratering that could have been present. 
Aside from the convective resurfacing, another acting force could be the atmospheric erosion, mainly the sublimation and subsequent refreezing of those ices on a daily and seasonal basis. It is also supposed that the mixture of those three ices might non-trivially interact with water ice and could possibly flow into the nearby regions, causing some geological surface changes, pretty much like glaciers do on Earth. I'll also like to note here that electrical erosion, of course, might also cause the material removal and deposition, and it is unknown whether it might play a role today or not. At this point, we have no idea about how strong is the electric field in Pluto's atmosphere, but as we'll see later, we have some other evidence that might suggest it is present there. I'd like to venture now into some more speculation and discuss the possible nature of the Tombaugh Regio and Sputnik planet. It seems likely indeed that, as the scientists suggest, this is the planetary scale reservoir of nitrogen, methane and carbon monoxide ices. But why does it occupy this particular place? If the atmospheric dynamics of Pluto is mostly governed by sublimation and refreezing of ices, then they might end up anywhere on the planet. It is actually known that the atmospheric characteristics are pretty homogeneous there, pretty much the same all over the Pluto's globe. So one might expect more or less homogeneous distribution of ices, at least over the strips of the same latitude. And indeed, we see those ices in various places, but not anywhere near that kind of quantity. So this leads to the question of the formation of this feature. Maybe initially there was a significant terrain slope and a huge basin in this part of planet. Actually, the New Horizons team seems to think the same thing. I quote, Sputnik Planum is mostly bordered by locally higher terrain, which suggests that it fills a topographic basin, end of quote. And later this basin could have been filled with volatiles, since the temperature on Pluto rises with altitude, so the terrain depressions act like refrigerators of sorts. NASA scientists seem to consider some large impact event as being the reason for Sputnik Planum formation. Yet the two recent papers that model the ice convection do not consider the depth of this reservoir to be more than around 10 kilometers. But what if it's not formed by an impact, and what if it's significantly deeper? Just as a wild speculation, I'd like to note that this region is located right at the equator of the dwarf planet, where the orbit of Charon and other moons lie. And it has roughly the same diameter as Charon, a bit more than 1,000 kilometers. Could it possibly be the very place of Charon's birth? Maybe it was somehow torn out of Pluto, or perhaps the material was just excavated electrically during one of the chaotic events in the Pluto's past. The same event could have led to the rich volatile loading on Pluto and birth of its other satellites, which have later settled closer to their current resonant orbits. There have probably been dozens of other satellites which have had two unstable orbits to survive. Although, as I've mentioned earlier, the actual point above which Sharon hovers is located right on the opposite side of Pluto with respect to the Sputnik planet. So if this version of their origins is correct, there should have also been a certain period of stabilization of orbits, possibly including strong mechanical and maybe even electrical stresses to the respectful bodies, during which Sharon eventually migrated to the opposite side of the planet at the same time significantly slowing down Pluto's rotation. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.